You know, the relationship between Richard Sherman and Russell Wilson has been squarely in focus this offseason. In today's Sunday conversation, the Seahawks corner addresses the reported hostility between he and his quarterback, Mitch Osina Anderson and his team, but let's be honest, he burst onto the trash-talking scene way back in 2012 by boldly yelling in Tom Brady's face, you mad, bro? <laughs> Five years later, ESPN's off-season report that he's not above antagonizing his own signal caller, Russell Wilson, and whether you believe that or not, I think we can all agree, Richard Sherman, not one to mince words. He sat down with Josina Anderson to explain where he gets his incidents in the ESPN report, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote him here, saying, it's just one snapshot, you know? People don't always get along. In a family, things don't always go, you know, hunky-dory. ESPN stands by the reporting in its story. Zubin, what's ahead on the show? Sports Center, breaking a baseball barrier, not with a bat, but instead with something much, much lighter. In weight, anyway. We're going to explain in this week's Sports Center featured presentation. It's going to be the Super Bowl champion Patriots taking on the Chiefs, uh, two teams and quarterbacks that have been introduced to Von Miller numerous times. He's one of the best pass rushers in the game, and he's a Super Bowl MVP based on those unique abilities. But there's one move Von Miller would love to steal from his compatriots as part two of our Pass Rusher Summit focuses on missing moves and quarterback head games. Is the third most visited country in the world. Maybe it's the Beijing roast duck. I don't know. 21 and a half million people populate China's capital city. Yeah, that's a lot. But nearly eight times that many people follow this guy's every move. Cristiano Ronaldo's social media channels tracking him all the way to China, where he spent the past three days and hung out with our Marty Smith. Richard Sherman showed up at Stanford and led the Cardinal in receptions his first two seasons. Catching the ball really too easy, yet limiting at the same time. Got to rely on another guy to get it to you. On defense, you control your own destiny. The cornerback was selected 154th overall by the Seahawks in 2011. 27 defensive backs taken before him in that draft. A chip the three-time All-Pro has never shaken. Sherman talked. The Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown is home to the players and managers, umpires and executives who represent the history and legacy of our national pastime. Those who have had a profound impact on the sport, both on and off the field. You may know many of their names, Jackie and Willie, Hank and Babe, Lou and Ted. But on July 29th, there will be a different kind of pioneer honored. One who you likely haven't heard of, but who has broken countless baseball barriers. Here is this week's SC Featured, which is narrated by Sharon Robinson, the daughter of Jackie Robinson. Looking forward to it. Claire Smith has many special supporters who will be in the crowd on Hall of Fame weekend. Family, friends, and many former players, including Steve Garvey, who's making the trip from California to see his friend honored. Smith will be given the award on the same day as her idol, Rachel Robinson, who is receiving the Buck O'Neill Lifetime Achievement Award for her and her husband Jackie's impact on the game of baseball. A star and one of Odell Beckham Jr.'s biggest fans lives halfway across the country from the NFL star. Been cheering on the Giants wideout since he was drafted three years ago. But this weekend it was Beckham by his bedside just five days after learning about this nine-year-old's greatest wish. OBJ dropped everything, flew to Texas on Saturday to sit with J. Ponce, who's battling a rare form of cancer and wanted to meet the three-time pro bowler. Beckham learned of the boy from a teammate's father and coordinated the visit with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Pictures of the two hanging out posted on Facebook by the family, Team j -Row, saying there are no words for this experience. Thank you. OBJ expected to be back at work in four days when the Giants training camp gets underway. Maybe he'll be rocking that Team j -Row t t-shirt, currently being sold to raise funds to cover the family's medical expenses. Odell Beckham Jr., my star of the night. America, yours. Lucky Whitehead is not a star for the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, he is no longer anything for the Dallas Cowboys. Citing a pattern of poor behavior, the Cowboys released Whitehead. Here's the glitch. The behavior to which the Cowboys referred isn't actually Whitehead's behavior. A handful of hours after Whitehead was mistakenly identified by a Virginia police department and accused of shoplifting, Whitehead was released more than a handful of hours after the police department admitted they were wrong 
Whitehead is still out of a job. Gonna get schmoofy on y'all. One of the best parts of my day, though, when my little one grabs my hand and we walk into her school together. She's three, she kind of has to. But I'm really gonna miss it when she no longer wants to do that. So my star of the night gives me hope that that time is not gonna come for at least a little while. Curtis Samuel clearly loves his mommy. The rookie out of Ohio State arrived at Panthers training camp, not in a shiny new car, but with his mom. Mom, Curtis in the white t-shirt. Dropped him off, caught on camera by Tiffany Blackman of the NFL Network. I cannot confirm that this over here is a minivan. That would make the story even better. Yep. But this is just like kindergarten. By comparison here, running back Jonathan Stewart, he showed up in a custom-painted duck mobile like the University of Oregon. Car painted green, yellow accent, had the word ducks on the, on the door handle. The mom mobile is going to win every time. Gucci star coming up. Seven years old. I'll give her seven. And playing fantasy GM with Kyrie Irving's future. Let's oh, it's go to the trade It's such a fun machine, game, right? It really is. <laughs> yes. Let's get real here with our executive. Got a lot of the NFL coming up in our show. Checking in on the morning slate. Coming up at 737, we go out live to Panthers camp, where all eyes are going to be on Cam Newton as he begins his first official practice today. And then at 849, we're going to go golfing with Matt Ryan as our insider Jim Trotter goes all access with the reigning NFL MVP. Talking everything from touch Touchdowns to tee shots. And then at 9, Tom Brady's 40th birthday just around the corner. We're going to go back to Patriots camp to tell you what early gift he received this offseason. We've got all that and more, and I wonder what the gift is. I'm very intrigued. Uh, but first, this happened to Harris. Yeah. Um, baseball off the head. I don't know how to <laughs> say it. Yeah, it's Jose could it's, and then that was his Facebook Live post. I know, Josina, you talked to him after he did that on Facebook. What did he have to say? I think the first thing I want to clarify is that this is not necessarily about his teammates. It's more just the general manager. We understand where you're coming from and to expect to have a sit down with Andy Reid when he reports on Thursday or a little bit after that. And did that come after the, the, the social media yes. outrage? Yes. Interesting. Yes, after the uh, text, but not necessarily, maybe in between the Facebook Live. Huh. Mm -hmm. It feels like also he's at a crossroads. He's, he's rea realizing reality on the other side of yes. football. Yes, and he roots for Justin Houston in D4. This is just more about what is his role. Okay. RG3 here with a workout with the Chargers yesterday. Uh, how did it go for RG3? This is the first workout of the season for another team in the offseason, I should say. Yes, yeah, so I talked to a Charger source last night. They said that it started since 2013. You, what has RG3 been doing to keep himself ready? He's been working out with Pep Hamilton, trying to mm -hmm. make sure that he stays crypt. Obviously, you know, Pep Hamilton has worked with Andrew yeah. Luck before and wanting to make sure he's recognizing defenses better. So as far as I understand, the ball came off his uh, hand re really well yesterday. So we'll see if they feel like he's an upgrade over what they have. And staying healthy. Yes. Yes. Always the storyline. Always the key. Speaking of health, there's a guy that has come back. Hey, coming up, it's big. We are live at the top of the 9 a.m. hour with both of the Super Bowl teams, the Patriots and the Falcons. We're going to get an update on how the teams are doing and what they're doing to get ready for another positive season. That's much more coming up next. Of Sports Center, Jay Harris, Lindsay Zarniak, Kevin DeGandhi. It's been 171 days of <laughs> that thrilling come from behind win by the Patriots over the Falcons, and now both their off seasons officially are over. I, by the way, just went to the doctor, and the guy that checked me in is a huge Falcons fan, and he was saying how much smack talk he was doing on Twitter <laughs> right before before that final. You know what? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Pretty funny, right? We've got both teams covered, though. Mike Reese dive into some other NFL topics, but let's start right with the Falcons. What's the latest with Julio Jones? We know that he had that foot surgery in March, right? Missed all of the offseason workout program. What's going on? Lindsay, they think he healed up pretty well. Now, keep in mind, he's been a limited Cowboys yesterday, as we talked about. Lucky Whitehead released following a false shoplifting accusation. We have sound that I want to play for you now. Lucky speaking exclusively to ABC News this morning. Situation being perceived now around the league. Look, I think most people around the league thought that Lucky Whitehead wasn't going to make their roster to begin with. Okay. So it became need him around. And I think okay. with all the situations and issues that they've had in the preceding weeks, it was easy to make an excuse or a scapegoat out of him. And just to be clear, this is not something that would linger in terms of his reputation. He has been cleared, but because of all of these details that came out before we knew that information. Well, no, Monday night, I think, was pretty apparent. Right. Once they released him from his agent when he had the flight record that he wasn't even in yep. Virginia of the day of the shoplifting arrest, that it was not him. What is the latest you're hearing there? I think we are on the clock. I think a decision from the league could come at any point. It could be this week. It could be next week. Me. If you were a betting man, you'd have to think it would be this week at some point, 
or the week after the Pro Football Hall of Fame game. We'll see what the league decides. No decisions as of yet, but to me, the Cowboys and Zeke are on the clock. Okay, in other Cowboys news, Lyle Collins, they're signing to a two-year contract extension through 2019. Who is next? Zach Martin, their guard, who is one Smith to an extension. They've signed Travis Frederick, their center, to an extension. They signed Lyle Collins, as you mentioned, to an extension. Zach Martin is the guy that they want. Zach Martin is the guy they need, and he'll be the next lineman there in Dallas to get a big deal that'll be north, well north of $10 million per year on average. All right, Adam Schefter, thank you. We know you're going to be back in just a short while to talk CTE and some new developments there guys all right we're live with the Panthers Cam Newton coming off shoulder surgery what's the plan for him in training camp and then at 955 the best of the best from a busy day we count down the top 10 sports plays from Tuesday Mullins wins the women's division she could hit it far too oh there's wow. no doubt about that mm -hmm. I mean it seems like he is he is both excited and he is grateful and he is like this is the best thing yes yeah, spirit animals what's yours Jay spirit animal yeah oh goodness I haven't had the chance to think about this what's yours oh yeah um Maybe an otter. Otter? An otter. Yeah. <laughs> Sleek and I, yeah. you know, fun. See, I would and go, I'll bite your head off. I would go cheetah. cheetah. Oh, that's good. Fast. That's good what guy. would you say? The Wookiee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as my music is real, it's no limit to how many ears I can grab. Kendrick Lamar knows what's up. Transcends limitations solely because he says he will speak it into existence. Odell Beckham Jr. Been taking notes. The Giants wideout set to make 1.8 million this season, making him the 670th highest paid player in the NFL for 2017. OBJ saying today, nah, now that's gonna change. Time now for Kearney's star. He proudly admits he spends most of his time thinking about discrete Schrodinger operators, high dimensional data compression, algebraic multigrid and diagrams. His mind consumed by math, really leaving little time for his day job. John Urschel retired from the NFL today. The 26 year old headed back to school full time to begin work on his doctorate in mathematics and for Kearney's star. And he's the poster boy for hanging it up in his prime. Lou Brock retired as the all time leader in stolen bases in 1979. The same year he picked up his sixth all star honors. Spent 19 seasons in the majors before being elected into the Hall of Fame in 1985. Today, the Cardinals iconic left fielder announced his greatest accomplishment. He is cancer free. The latest plus maybe on Bell's absence is giving the opportunity for one rookie to shine. We head live to Steelers camp next. Don't go anywhere. The Hall of Fame welcomes in Jeff Bagwell, P Pudge Rodriguez over the weekend. These are two players whom there had been suspicions of PED use. What does this tell you about the future of Hall of Fame voting? Well, I think there's been a softening, very small softening among the voters. I think five years ago or so, it was a very hard line group. And now I think there's some progress going, but we're still going slowly. But at least they're going in this direction as opposed Back. to way down. Trickling, trickling change right there. Now, let's talk about the trade deadline today at 4 p.m. Eastern. The Red Sox have acquired Mets closer Addison Reed for three prospects. Your thoughts on Boston's pickup? Well, it's really important that the Red Sox get peace from the actual team now. This is a really good move for the Red Sox. Because in the end, Tony, as David Johnson used to tell me, you win down the stretch with bullpen and bench. You win in October with bullpen and bench. And this is the common denominator of a lot of World Series teams in recent years, a deep, versatile bullpen. And the Red Sox today got a little deeper and a little more versatile. Tim Kirshen with what we need to know on this very busy day. Thank you so much, Tim. A reminder to everyone, our Wednesday night baseball matchup this week is a series. Our NFL insider who also serves as a fantasy football expert. Yes, he does. Field Yates. All guru right. Expert? Is that yeah. what guru. Guru. Yeah, yeah, like guru. guru. I do like Guru? Yeah, I'm into All that. Right. I'll try to remember that for next time. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about, El mentioned it perfectly. How are these players doing the ones I'm talking about that finished late last season hurt. How are they doing at this moment? Yeah, let's sort of focus in on two of the biggest big things from him again this season. And then Gronk. Yes. Gronk is really perhaps one of the most in those nine games. 
9 0 with yeah. an average scoring yeah. margin of over 19 points per game. And I hear they won a Super Bowl without him as well. That might have happened. Unbelievable. Look, the only guy that can take Gronk out is really Gronk at this point, right? So try anything at this point. Um, I'm trying fantasy football for the first We're time. We're excited for Al. Really exci Welcome I've to the board. No, I never, on. I just, I've never <laughs> wanted to play it because I've never wanted to have to cheer for someone that I don't want to cheer for based on them being on my team. Understood. With that being you said. You get over that. Exactly. You're right. And I and, and so Field is our fantasy guru, as we've already yes, established. Uh, said. Yeah, we've establish that but I'm back for some more information listen even I, I don't need you to tell me to draft Antonio Brown I get it right. give me some sleeper picks to watch and by the way America here last month and you could tell that what he wants is his offense to once again look like it did in 2015 John Smokey Brown would be a big part of that and he's got plenty of value being based, based on where he's drafted you know it'd be a party being at your fantasy draft party I mean, the, yeah it's always a, party. a great thing by 34 Eastern the Dodgers they had a July to remember but just in case you don't we're gonna relive the best moments from LA's month and then at 745 Eastern Super Bowl champion Rob Ninkovich is in studio we asked for his best Belichick story now that he is retired and hopefully he's gonna give us the goods and then at 751 the best of the vet best from a busy day in sports we're gonna count down the top 10 best plays from Monday Yay! Sweet. We have some pretty good plays now. Do we? Yeah. Do we? I, it's, it's, it's cool when guys in one sport cross over and do another sport. Thrown one so. out. Now she's like, she's like, you're the worst. Like yeah. talking about. She's an expert. <laughs> I think that's hard. Quick step out of I here. Can critique. Pitching coach, next job. Is <laughs> Linda Cone, pitching yeah. coach? Sign her up. <laughs> you could play for the Mets theoretically right now. The Dodgers. The best team in baseball on pace to have one of the best regular season records in MLB history have been featured prominently in our top plays, top walk-offs, top rookies, top everything. And what do they do to top off their historic month? Well, they add you Darvish to their starting rotation. So on the first day of August, we look at how July has them the favorite. There are no words. Goodness. Oh, it's like, it is a first-class problem, nice problem. Where do you put the fifth banner? Before we think about being winning a six, where do you put number five? Oh, that's a good question. Somewhere the Bills fans are like, where would we put just one? We've got plenty of room to put one. I know, I know some <laughs> folks in Pittsburgh you could call. you got where to put Yeah, they have plans six. of knocking like, off yeah. the six. Patriots. Yeah, you got to get that home game, you know, to that's do that. True. That's true. True. Okay, That's true. get on that. Give them a good pep talk to your team. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> Why do people not like us? Because you don't know where you're going to put your fifth banner and you're on your way to a sixth. That's why. Oh, more football on the way. Yes. Okay, as a Broncos fan, I really hope last year was a fluke for the Raiders as we bring in our ESPN front office insider, Lou Riddick, with us now. <laughs> give me the good worse. word. Right, give me the good word. Do we expect, based on what you just saw on those numbers, do you expect a little regression here for the Raiders in 2017? Well, that would be the natural thought process, but I'll tell you this, you know, some spotlight on you type of performer, but ever since he started, that we just need to chalk it up to, well, they got lucky last year. Sure. I think that's just who we Better than 12 and 4. Just deal with it. Yeah, true. Get over it. Uh, you have a good defense, so don't worry about that. And Let's it. go back to the Raiders' defense, because yeah. as long as we were talking about that, one player on the Raiders who hopes to continue to overachieve, as you know, is Khalil Mack. Mm -hmm. Derek Carr, last year, we all remember it, he predicted last year that Mack would record 30 sacks last season. He fell short of that prediction, did Mack, but that didn't stop Carr from doubling down on it. So that NFL record for sacks in a season is 22 and a half. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can Matt get to 30 this season? <laughs> well, th there's a lot of things that have to happen for him. Uh, from a team perspective, got to be nine. He doesn't pull a Brett Favre, Michael Strahan thing and fake it. No, this guy's. Yeah. That's okay, but that's the record, record, right? Okay, yeah. go ahead. Al. Just really quickly, we have like 30 seconds. I have like a legitimate gripe about this. You mentioned getting some help. He did get some help because he went to Von Miller's pass rusher camp yeah. summit, if you will, he wasn't and told. got. I don't like this. Why are they sharing trade <laughs> secrets and they're in the same division? Why would Von help someone you know, who's going to be coming after his quarterback's head? You know, Standing you know, point. You know what, what Von? Von, when you Fans retire, hate that. Fans hate it. Yeah, well. well too bad. Oh, uh, see? With it. No love. We're always last. Stop telling. Don't give the secret sauce away. Uh, Lou Riddick, thank you for bringing <laughs> your perspective. New on Sports Center. It was, it was far more used to being mic'd up. Jeremy Renner is, is with us here, a two time right. Academy Award nominee. Uh, uh, people are talking about that. The buzz is building here for your new film, Wind River, which is set to be uh, in theater. In theaters coming your way tomorrow. What was it about this project that spoke to you so much? Uh, it, it, 
Yeah, I mean, Jeremy. Well, we yeah. were researching stalking, aka stalking. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's uh, we read that you broke both your arms, so we were freaking out. We're like, okay, yeah. we can't, like, you know, let's be gentle. Well, Not that we're. Yeah, it's like, is he, still, is he still going to come here? Yeah, what would you yeah. do if I, my arms were fine? <laughs> so, how does one, one broken arm is bad enough? Two, how the heck did you handle that? Like, the simple things, like. Yeah, yeah that was. That was, the... what, was while performing stunts that you broke them? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I feel like 20 feet is supposed to land on my. On my feet. Back on your own stunts? No, no. I mean, this is just an accident. Ultimately, that yeah. happened. Football. We we understand that you're you're from the Bay Area. Yes. Why yes. do you Why do you hate the Raiders? <laughs> well, it's, you, you kind of have to. You know, if you're from the Bay, you kind of flip a coin. Did that diminish your fandom at all? No, no, no. I mean, I, I look. The Niners aren't aren't. But, but I also got. I also. But my, I'm lucky also because I did choose the Patriots a long time ago as my AFC Ooh. team. Okay. So, uh, I'm, you know, the invitation, <laughs> you know, the email box works, but, yeah. but, you know, how much trash talk is there, is there along a sporting line on a movie set when you know the other person's a fan? Uh, Mental assassin I'm getting stuff. it in your head. All right, let me ask you this. <laughs> what would you sacrifice if Tom Brady does what he does in New England and decides, you know what, I want to I want to retire for the team I grew up rooting for because mm -hmm. he's a California guy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what would you give up for Brady to go to the Bay and go out as a 49er? Oh, man. I, I'm, it's I'm, I'm a loyal loyalty. guy. Yeah, you're a Raiders fan. You know about loyalty. <laughs> we got a couple titles. It was a while back. Jeremy, Jeremy Renner, thanks, I guess, Thank for so coming much. by. The film is Wind River, and again, it's in theaters uh, tomorrow. We appreciate it as always, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Slate of goodies, including Twinkle Toes from City Field. David Ross ahead of tonight's Sunday night game between the Mets and the best team in all of baseball. Then Sal Pal looks good in a fuchsia jacket. I know this because of Dak Prescott, and it's going to all make sense when those two chat in just a bit. Plus, only 25 days between right now and the start of college football. What has your eye? We'll help you make a must-see list for week one in just a bit. Come on, Eileen. How about these lyrics? Ain't got no cash, ain't got no style, ain't got no gal to make you smile. Don't worry, be happy. But if that were Dak Prescott, there would be no happy because who actually wants to be a one-hit wonder? Dak certainly doesn't. He expects more, which is expected of him as well as the quarterback of one of the most recognizable franchises in all of sports. Sal Palantonio now has this week's Sunday conversation. A few things for you to look forward to. We call them goodies, including an appearance by Jessica Mendoza, who chats with Cody Bellinger about his sweet uh, swing. Then Sal Pal, he looks good in a fuchsia jacket. I know this because of Dak Prescott, and you will too. It will all make sense when the two chat in just a bit. Plus, only 25 days between right now and the start of college football, in case you just missed that stat. Who has your eye week one? We'll help you make a must-see list for that week coming up in just a bit. Insight here. When I turned 25, which seems kind of laughable now, I sort of had like a panic attack. I kind of felt like 25 was that number where like I needed to be an adult. And even today, like if someone says to me, there's 25 this or whatever, like 25 means it's time to get serious. So if there's like 25 days left until something happens, stop messing around. 25 means you could rent a car as well. I thought it was 26. No, is it? I think so. Uh, research, unless it's college football, of course, I have been preparing for this since February. I read Mark Schlebaugh's way too early top 25 as soon as it came out. Matt Barry, he's really excited about college football as well. That'll be dampened when his beloved Arizona State Sun Devils start one and three, but for now he's pumped and has your week one games to target. 